This podcast is for entertainment purposes only and does not substitute for professional medical advice. Please seek a medical professional or healthcare provider if you're seeking any medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Thanks, everyone. This is our podcast or Patreon. Uh, episode 40, so weekly. Weekly. Okay. Hello, hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome to episode 40. We're already in episode 40. What? This is crazy. Yes, ma'am. I can't believe it. Yes, ma'am. 40 episodes. 40 guys. episodes of us. Yes. I love it. Yeah. I'm so happy we're here. I okay. know. All right. Okay. Jules, what are we talking about today? This is something super trendy, super trendy in the medical world, super trendy everywhere else. It's everywhere in the news right now. Yeah. For something new, something different. I mean, different. this is like, this so is like breakthrough about. in medicine, you know? Yeah. Things that why. are like can really, really, really help a lot of people out there. 100%. So, so. we're talking about CRISPR. CRISPR. C-R-I-S-P-R. We will discuss what that means, yep. what it does, what it's being used for. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have heard about CRISPR, continue listening. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say keep watching. Well, well technically yeah, watching keep watching too. on YouTube. Especially if you're a Patreon yes. member, then you see it on the day that it comes out. If you're not a uh, Patreon member, you just listen to us on the weekly. It comes out a week later. But yes. Patreons, you know, you get it right then and there. And now you we're guys talking about awesome. Patreon. So yeah. Patreon, guys, is a subscription, okay, where we release weekly episodes. Yes, weekly. Okay, so four episodes in the month. And yep. it's Julie and I on video, a little bit more unhinged because we're behind a paywall, so we so. can let loose a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and um, they're completely different episodes. So yeah. it's the same format. Yeah. Like, same format. But different topics completely. Yeah. So different topics. You get two episodes of us weekly if you become a Patreon subscriber. Exactly. So. Yeah, you know. and we're gonna and be talking. You help us out. You help us out to continue with this. Yes, get we use better all equipment. of our Patreon stuff for our equipment. It goes so. directly into the podcast. Yeah. It, you know, pay, helping us pay for the subscriptions for everything, yeah. editing for better equipment. For I mean, you know, podcasting's a thing. Yeah, you know, and so, it's all in house. We do nothing. We outsource nothing. Yeah, like I do the editing, the the artwork, the the publishing, the social media. The, 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 the. It's just us. All. Yeah, you know, we Julie, Julie does it all. <laughs> but anyways, so check us out on Patreon, guys. Yeah. And for those of you that are patrons, Patreons, whatever you want to call it yourselves. Thank you. Gracias. You guys are the best. Anyway. All right. So let's start. OK, what is it? What's CRISPR? All right. CRISPR. So this stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. Mm -hmm. WTF. <laughs> Let's just keep it at CRISPR. Yeah. OK, so what is it? It's a genome editing tool that allows for the removal, modification or editing. OK, or addition of sections of DNA. OK, so DNA, our genetic makeup. Yeah. CRISPR, think of it as a little scissor. That comes in and starts chopping little things that may be mutated, may have some errors in it, and goes ahead and edits it and corrects it. So it consists of two main components, the Cas9 protein and the guide RNA. The guide RNA is responsible for matching a target gene to the CRISPR-Cas9 molecule. And that target gene must have a specific sequence of DNA followed by a protospacer adjacent motif, okay? Pam. This is a lot, yeah. This is a lot of science, yeah, okay? Yeah. And we're going to break it down for And we're going to break it down. I know it sounds like a lot. For those yeah. of you that are not in the sci in sciences or whatever, don't... Yeah, just give don't it get overwhelmed. Yeah. Give it a minute. We're just defining exactly what it is for those exactly. of you that are, you know, kind of yeah. in the science field. And it gets very interesting, guys. Yeah. Because think of this like a computer programming software, Yeah. you know, that you're literally going into coding yeah and changing up software yeah exactly but for people for humans 
for not even only people and humans yeah. for crops yeah for you know plants animals everything everywhere and we're gonna talk about that but we're yes. just giving you exactly what what it is so you take this complex right pam cast nine all these things right mm -hmm. and then once the target gene is identified, okay, the target gene, which is what we're trying to edit or change or modify, okay? Yeah. yeah. Once we get to the target gene, the Cas9 endonuclease, all right, cuts the DNA, and the DNA can be repaired by using non-homologous ending jo end joining or homology directed repair. Short in short, it basically edits it. Okay. Edits your DNA. Yeah, edits your DNA. Okay. So That's if there was something wrong in your dna yeah. it could replace it or remove it yeah it targets it it's like oh i need to cut and edit that okay and then correct yeah. it and we're gonna okay. give you examples of exactly what they're using that for now because this is being used already now yes to do exactly that it's yeah pretty awesome so crispr cas9 has shown promising and uh promise in treating genetic diseases preventing the spread of diseases and offering more effective treatments for various diseases such as cancer and hiv and we'll go into all of this in the episode okay mm -hmm. so it's also been used to use in agriculture for crop improvement and diagnostic tools for disease detection yeah the technology has been rapidly advancing and is now widely used in molecular biology laboratories around the world yep. okay it's amazing so julie's going to talk a little bit about the history on crispr yeah so where did this come from how did we get here so the history of crispr begins with the discovery of crispr slash cas protein system in sharia coli E. coli, e. coli. <laughs> in, in 1987. The system was found to be a part of the immunologic mechanisms of prokaryotic ma microorganisms, bacteria, in 2012. Important studies were published that contributed to the development of the CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing tool, so the scissor. We're going to talk about it as about a, the scissor, yeah. so because it's just, it's a lot. Since then, CRISPR technology has rapidly advanced and expanded its applications in various fields. It has been used for gene editing, including correcting genetic errors and inactivating or activating genes. So these are parts of your DNA that they are not working, but yeah. it could make it work. Yeah, you know? it's either working or not working. Or not doing it right. Or you want, exactly, or not doing it right, or you want to shut it off. So uh, this can do all of that. Yeah, it's, in, it's incredible. So CRISPR has been applied in diagnosing cancer-specific genetic sequence changes and treating diseases like Parkinson's disease, HIV, heart disease, and genetic disorders. In addition, CRISPR has revolutionized cancer research by providing new insights into cancer genetics and therapeutic vulnerabilities. Furthermore, CRISPR technology has been used in agriculture for crop improvement and enhancing plant tolerance to environmental stresses. The future of CRISPR involves further advances in delivery systems and minimizing off-target activities. So we're able to just modify for our benefit how we want our crops to grow and what we want them to do and all that using this If only we technology. had a human version of CRISPR. What do you mean? Can I cut and edit things that I don't like out of a human? We're going to get into that. You think so? Yeah. Like to change like personality types? Can well, you okay. Well, you're talking about personality types. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, I mean, we're talking about like... I'm going to come at you with a scissor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Evie's taking CRISPR to a new level. Oh, yeah. It's like CRISPR. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but I mean, we're talking about Parkinson's disease. So maybe... Yeah. Maybe in the, in the future we could. We could change some aspects. Like recently we talked about narcissism. What if we could cut narcissism out? Yeah, if it's associated with something genetically. That'd be super cool. Yeah. We could all do without narcissism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So current uses of CRISPR. So these are the most recent things being used um, by this technology or this gene therapy. Mm -hmm. So CRISPR technology has a wide range of current uses. It's transformed multiple fields, cancer, immunology, by enabling direct genomic manipulation of immune cells for unbiased functional genetic screens and discovery of novel drug targets. So what that means is that we can use this technology to target medications for someone. That's crazy. According to their genetic makeup. Okay. So this is, this is what we call individualized medicine. Yeah. Personalized medication. Exactly. So CRISPR cas system, the scissor, okay, <laughs> is being used as therapeutics for human diseases, including sickle cell anemia, cancer, and diabetes. Sickle cell is the one that just had the big 
um release you know, because release, yeah. um, it started in the uk and then it just which we're going to talk about later on it just was allowed by the fda fda yeah, yeah. fda release as or, a treatment exactly okay. here in the in the states so even in ophthalmology so in ophthalmology mm-hmm. research crispr cas9 has been used to correct pathogenic mutations in eye stem cells and has shown promising in treating inherited retinal disorders one of the CRISPR-Cas13 systems has been adapted for various applications, including killing antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Hello. Wow. You know, yeah. we are talking about yeah. bacteria that says fuck you t- to, everything. To, all, to everything, to all antibiotics where people have to take really strong antibiotics and yeah. we can use that yeah. to make it susceptible again. I know. It's amazing. So and we're going to need it because yeah. all of these MRSAs and all that, they're getting worse and worse, yeah. more and more we're, resistant. We're having MDROs or multi-drug resistant organisms everywhere. They're practically impossible, to, By the day. almost, yeah. you know, impossible to kill and they're yeah. killing people, you yeah. know, so we're going to need something else other than, you know, stronger antibiotics. Yeah. And I have a yeah. ton of patients that are like, oh, I got into the black market. You know, I just go to Hialeah and Hialeah, for those of you that live in Miami, you know, Hialeah. How can I describe Hialeah? Ah. But- so Jules, very, how can you describe Hialeah? A very multifaceted area, <laughs> area of, of Miami. Our... What is it? Uh, La Ciudad que <laughs> progresses backwards. Yeah, maybe. Um, it's so it's a. It, I can't say that it's like a. I'm not gonna shit on it because I love Hialeah. Okay, I didn't anyway. grow up in Hialeah, but anyways. <laughs> so I have some patients tell me, no, I go to Hialeah or Little Havana. Yeah. And I go to one of the la farmacias there, one of the little pharmacies. And I tell them, give me five packs of amoxicillin and six packs of azithromycin. I don't even want and to know how they are able to get these without I, a script. No, they do. You just go and order it. I've had people get steroid injections, Jeez. B12 injections, like how- everything without a prescription. And here we are talking about antibiotic resistance, and it's because of that. And exactly. I don't really think people understand nope, no. antibiotic resistance. No. And why should they, right? It's not something that's really yeah. talked about, like, yeah, in true. small talk between people. No. So, no. Um, but this is what we're talking about. So now CRISPR has given us a chance to genetically edit this, yeah. okay, out yeah. of these bacteria that are resistant to be sensitive to these and susceptible to these medications to help us, yeah. right? It's also used in developing highly specific detection tools, regulating gene expression, and modifying RNA in vivo. So RNA is what we use. So basically, we have our DNA. And then RNA, so our cells will copy that, okay, with this little machinery. It's going to copy the DNA into RNA. And then we use RNA to make our proteins to make what we use to function on a daily basis. So since we've talked briefly about modifying crops and whatnot, I was doing this research and I'm like, okay, I we've all heard about GMOs, genetic modified organisms, all of that, about foods with, that are GMOs and all that stuff. How does that relate to CRISPR? Because they're not the same. Yeah. You know, it's easy to think that they're the same, especially when, you know, you're introduced to it like we just did. So let's go ahead and break that down for you. So CRISPR technology and GMO, genetically modified organism, foods are related in that they both involve the modification of an organism's genetic material. However, the methods and outcomes can differ significantly. So GMO typically refers to organisms that have been genetically modified in ways that do not occur naturally, often through transfer of genes from one species to another to introduce new traits like pest resistance or drought tolerance. Okay, so we're taking from one different species and we're putting it into another species. That's GMO. Now, CRISPR is a more precise genome um, editing tool that allows scientists to alter an organism's DNA by adding, removing, or altering specific gene sequences. It's often used to create changes within the same species, which can result in crops with improved traits such as higher yields, better nutritional value, or resistance to diseases. But how it mainly differs is that it stays within the same species. Unlike GMO, they get it from different species and practically make a new species, you know? Um, So one key difference is that CRISPR modified crops are sometimes not classified as GMOs because they do not necessarily contain genes from different species, as I have reiterated it. (laughs) Instead, CRISPR may be used to edit the genes that are already present within the organism to enhance certain characteristics. 
So in summary, while both CRISPR and GMO technologies aim to improve crop traits for agricultural benefits, CRISPR offers a more targeted approach to genetic modification that may sidestep some of the controversies associated with traditional GMOs. So now you know. Because I wanted to know. I'm like, okay, so what's the exact difference then? Yeah. No. yeah. So yeah. there you go. All right. So some examples that have been modified using CRISPR technology includes CRISPR tomatoes. I love, can you imagine people start like putting this in the supermarket? Like I know. CRISPR tomatoes, CRISPR mushrooms, CRISPR rice. <laughs> I, I saw there. I know. So, yeah. okay. So CRISPR tomatoes, modified traits for like compact plant growth, larger fruits, higher vitamin C levels and resistance to disease. The mushrooms engineered to resist browning, rice improving higher yield, citrus fruits edited to save oranges from greening disease, chocolate, okay, altered to save cacao trees, wheat modified to remove gluten. Hello, that's huge. That's what I'm saying. That's okay. why these are examples of how they're being used yeah. to modify. And celiac, know? celiac is very, you know. Yeah, it's hindering. Yeah, it's pretty bad, actually. Yeah. So if you could just like you know, eat whatever you want because it's CRISPR modified yeah. to help you out yeah. and digest it. It's working great. Yeah. So these modifications aim to enhance nutritional value, yield, and disease resistance of crops, contributing to more sustainable and efficient agricultural practices. Yeah. So think about it. You yeah. know, that's, I don't work in agriculture. Okay? That's food waste. That's what I'm saying. So I don't work in agriculture, but I can only have you know the imagination okay the understanding yeah basic the, under understanding. the basic understanding but imagine if we were to use crispr to make sure that our food doesn't get any disease yeah okay yeah, yeah. saves it yeah. less work less labor you know yeah amazing and more some, yield yeah and, and then cook. some of these diseases will go and pass on to other types of foods in the same area yeah yeah so, yeah crazy it's it's just it's good all around. I mean, right, at least for, for what we're talking about right now. Yeah. So the public's thoughts on CRISPR, because there's a lot of thoughts on CRISPR. Like always. And everyone we, has opinions. Yeah. And I have my positive thoughts, as we've seen. And, and I do have my hesitancy, too. And we're going to talk about that. And we're going to start right here, right now. So the public's perception of CRISPR technology is complex, as mine are. I mean, mine are complex and varies widely. So according to a Pew Research Center survey, while there is considerable interest in the potential health benefits of gene editing, there is also a significant level of worriness, particularly among parents of minor children and heavily religious individuals. In general, people tend to support the therapeutic uses of gene editing, such as treating or preventing serious diseases at birth. However, there is less consensus on the use of CRISPR for enhancements such as increasing intelligence, which is largely largely used as a misuse of technology. Yeah, there's that's you're touching now on ethically like, yeah, you know, worrisome area. Yeah. So social media analysis also reflects a range of opinions from positive to neutral to negative with sentiments fluctuating over time. The conversation spiked in 2018 with mostly neutral and negative sentiments, particularly around the topic of hashtag CRISPR babies. So overall, the public takes a cautious stance towards scientific research on gene editing, drawing distinctions be based on specific applications and ethical considerations that are involved. So let's talk about the ethics of it, I guess. Yes, because in medicine, there's always some ethics that's involved. Yeah. So what are the ethical concerns regarding CRISPR? Let's talk about the main thing, <laughs> safety, okay? Yeah, start so, with the basics. CRISPR, it's actually been shown to be safer than a lot of the other gene therapies that we have, yeah. okay? So the possibility of off-target effects, unintended changes to DNA, and mosaicism. So basically, when some cells carry some of the DNA, like the original DNA, yeah. and then the other ones carry the CRISPR-edited DNAs, raises safety concerns okay mm -hmm. so informed consent is also another thing it's challenging to obtain informed consent for a germline therapy because the individuals affected by the edits or the is the future generations cannot give consent okay mm -hmm. justice and equity there's concern that genome editing may only be accessible to wealthy leading to increased inequality that's a hard balance it's a hard balance that is a very hard balance because i can see some of that fear yeah. yeah um slippery slope some worry that therapeutic uses of genome editing could lead to non-therapeutic and enhancement purposes which are controversial yeah 
So I can see that too. Like, I don't know what happens. It, it's all, you know, your DNA is so deep. Yeah. And if you start really using CRISPR to like its full potential, could we potentially create, I don't know, like a Hercules or a Wonder Woman? That's what you know I'm saying. What I mean? Yeah. So, which is insane. Yeah. Um. So what about interference with nature? Editing the human germline is seen by some as overstepping natural boundaries with unpredictable long-term consequences. So could this mess up our whole entire ecosystem? Yeah. Especially with us whole entire like crops and all that stuff. Like we're talking about the life cycle. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Complete species changes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, survival of the fittest is no longer. No. You know? Yeah. Okay, so responsibility to future generations. There are questions about our responsibility towards the future generations and the legitimacy of making decisions that affect their genetic makeup without their consent. So these concerns have led to calls for careful consideration, international regulations, and public debate to decide the permissible uses of gene editing technologies. Yep. So now Jules is going to talk to us about the hashtag CRISPR babies. Yeah, that's what started this whole, like we said previously in 2018 when CRISPR was first like really, you know, kind of like thrown out there about all the things that it could do, but mostly about the enhancements yeah. it could do. So not like about all just the good things like helping with chronic diseases, removal of like genetic mutations of whatever that are that are not beneficial. We're talking about enhancements, yeah. you know, so CRISPR babies as they were referred, refers to children born with their genomes edited using the CRISPR-Cas9 technology, so the scissor. The term became widely known after the 2018 announcement by Chinese scientist He Jinku. Yep, Jinku. Okay, Jinku. Okay, there, what she said. <laughs> Who claimed to have created the first babies with edited genomes to confer resistance to HIV, which is great. This event sparked a global debate about the ethics and safety of germline genome editing, as many changes made would be passed on to future generations. The children, known as Lulu and Nana, are said to be healthy toddlers, but their futures hold many questions due to unprecedented nature of the procedure. So, yeah. Oh, well, that's what Lulu and Nana... Do Which they have is, an Instagram? Do, right? <laughs> Can I follow Lulu and Nana? Right? But the thing is, like, if you're... <clears throat> this had said if you're messing with the germline yeah. it's not only the toddlers and the future adults that these children are going to be it's their offspring are now also genetically modified not genetically that's the wrong word well, genetically, yeah, modified. genetically modified modified yeah. their offspring are also genetically modified so that whole line yeah from them on mm -hmm. is modified yeah but could we so potentially interesting could we potentially end a lot of diseases 100 percent, yeah. exactly but then that goes back to that other side of the coin yeah. it's like how much are we editing and it's like it's just a lot you know there, it, there's a lot to think about in that there's definitely like, pros and cons oh, yeah yeah mm -hmm. i mean it's mostly ethical but you know for hiv resistance that's pretty pretty cool that, that that's was... just like one thing you know, exactly we're not talking about editing your genes so you can come out with blue eyes you know what I mean? well but they can yeah no yeah and, I'm saying and you can but that's like the whole entire balance exactly exactly all right so how does the u.s government regulate gene editing research government regulations of gene editing research varies by country uh, but it generally involves oversight to ensure safety ethical considerations and responsible use of technology in the united states for instance we have the national academic okay we have the National Academy. <clears throat> I have so, like one ear that's like completely clogged. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, it happens with simple words with you. I know. <clears throat> okay. Okay. We In do, the we US, got... we have the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. So the NASEM launched an initiative to guide the responsible use of human gene editing research, examining clinical, ethical, legal, and social implications of it. So they recommend strict criteria for clinical trials, especially concerning germline therapy. So germline, okay, in the context That's of CRISPR, quote unquote germline, refers to the sex cell, so the eggs and sperm, okay, 
that are used to pass on genes from one generation to the next. Okay. So when we were talking about Lulu and Nana, yes, that's this what is they what had. we're talking about. Yeah. So germline editing with CRISPR Cas technology involves changes to these cells, which means any alteration would be inherited by future generations. So it's not just Lulu and Nana, it's Lulu and Nana's future kid. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. from them onward, it's edited. Yeah. You know, it's no longer like us or like, so you know, crazy. Isn't that mind blowing? Yeah. But then, yeah. you you know, you talk about genetic mosaicism. So yeah. it's like some cells have CRISPR, but some cells don't. That's it. Yeah. So, so how does, how yeah. does that work? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's very complex. Very. Yep. Okay. So recombinant DNA advisory committee, RAC. Okay. It provides recommendations to the National Institute of Health. So the NIH. Okay on research involving recombinant DNA, which includes gene editing. That's another kind of safeguard that we have for the government trying to regulate this. The other regulation is what we all know, the FDA, okay? So it oversees clinical trials and marketing approval for therapies involving gene editing. There's a moratorium on germline alterations, meaning clinical trials proposals for such alterations are not currently approved. So CRISPR right now for germline is not approved yeah. by the FDA. Like what happened with Lulu and Nana, not approved here in the not US. Not here. That's why it happened over there in China. Yes. So the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the USDA, has revised regulations for GMO and gene edited plants under the SECURE rule, okay, which applies to organisms produced through genetic engineering. So I guess the USDA is basically when we're talking about crops and stuff like that yeah that would make sense yeah yes and then these regulations aim to balance the advancement of scientific research with ethical standards and public safety concerns yep let's talk about europa Europa. because you know shit's different over there that's why that's why i'm like okay that's all here good and dandy in the u.s we touched a little bit on china they allowed it to happen the world what about europe but then you know how sometimes it happens in europe and then it trickles over here like sickle cell Mm -hmm. um that we're going to touch upon in the crispr cell um crispr the crispr technology that's now being used to treat sickle cell it first started in europe yeah and then it made its way over here so you know we'll talk a little bit about that yeah so in europe The regulation of gene editing research is guided by a combination of EU-wide directives and individual member state laws. The European Union's approach to gene editing, particularly in agriculture, has been cautious and is subject to strict regulations. And yes, I did, when when this first came out in the news and all that, it's very strict. Like they barely have any GMOs out yeah. there. Like they practically do. I think in Spain they don't allow GMOs. Period. Okay. You know, unlike here, pretty much. Most of our food is GMO, mm-hmm. to be to be honest. So GMO Directive 2001-18-EC. This directive regulates the deliberate release of genetically modified organisms into the environment and places significant restrictions on gene editing, treating edited organisms as GMOs. The European Court of Justice, the ECJ ruling in 2018, the ECJ ruled that organisms obtained through gene editing are subject to the same regulations as other GMOs, even if they do not contain foreign genes. EU clinical trials regulation. This regulation bans gene therapy clinical trials that result in modifications into the germline. However, it does not specify whether non-clinical research is permitted or banned. The European Parliament's research service has also conducted studies to review the governance government governance yeah, of genome editing, suggesting that new regulatory frameworks may be needed to address unique benefits, risks, ethical issues, and societal implications of these technologies. Overall, the EU's regulatory stance is one of caution, emphasizing safety and ethical considerations in the advancement of gene editing research. So I think it's safe to say they are a lot more apprehensive to GMOs, CRISPR, yeah. and all that than we are. Like, yeah. we're a, a little bit more loose on that. Wild. Yeah. I mean, not as wild as China. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> clearly, we don't have... Lulu and Nana. We don't have Lulu's and Nana's here, yeah. which will would probably be called, like, Jessica and John. Jane and... John and Jane. John and Jane. Sorry, yeah. Why did I go with Jessica? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's like John Doe, Jane Doe. It's like it, when you don't know the patient ID, that's what we usually yeah call them. How cute would that be? Jane and John. Yeah. yeah. All right, anyways. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about recent news on CRISPR. This is yeah. kind of what we're hearing on the media and stuff like that. So things I think yeah. that are a little bit more relative to everyone at home. Yep. So 
Kesjevi approval. The gene editing therapy Kesjevi has been conditionally approved in Europe for patients 12 and older with severe sickle cell disease and transfusion dependent thalassemia, two serious blood diseases. FDA approval. So on December 8th, 2023, the US, the FDA approved the first CRISPR treatment for sickle cell diagnosis. <laughs> Approved the first CRISPR treatment for sickle cell disease. The treatment called Exacel is made by Vertex and CRISPR Therapeutics. It edits the gene involved in red blood cell shape and function and appears to functionally cure the disease for at least one year. It's okay. Incredible. For those of you that don't incredible. know consequences of sickle cell, mm. we're talking about you are more at risk for certain infections. Kids have to take penicillin, okay, as a prophylactic. So every day yeah. to make sure that they don't have these certain diseases. We're talking about pain crisis, okay? We're talking about- Anemia? Anemia, yeah, that they need transfusions. We're talking about mm -hmm. acute chest syndrome. So which is when they have really, you know, significant respiratory distress symptoms. We're talking about clots, okay? So we are talking about a whole slew of complications that people with sickle cell have that can be potentially cured for one year. Yeah. And, you know, and we'll see what the future recommendations are. Is it's, you know, like how often right. they get these therapies and right, stuff right. like that. But this is huge. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's so, it, it could be really debilitating. No, like, it's extremely you know? debilitating. And even the drugs that sickle cell patients have to take. Yeah are hard drugs like they are not benign drugs they have a lot of side effects to them yep. they're they're harsh you yep. know so if we could do something that could eliminate that yeah that's amazing yeah so the first gene edited meat will come from disease proof crispr pigs by michael lepage on february 23rd 2024 just published yesterday. on new scientists so literally just yesterday yeah i just added this yesterday so <laughs> the article discusses a significant advancement in the agricultural biotechnology where pigs have been genetically edited to be immune to porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome prrs yeah. it's a disease that costs farmers globally an estimate of 2.7 billion annually these pigs are expected to be the first genetically modified farm animals to be used for large-scale meat production. The company behind this innovation, Genus, has created hundreds of CRISPR-edited pigs in prep for commercial launch, which could occur within the next two years. This development represents a major step forward in the use of gene editing for livestock and could have a profound impact on meat production and disease management in the farms. It's incredible. Yeah, so this is just one way that we see this like agriculturally. So we're exactly. seeing this medically, we're With seeing the this sickle agriculturally. Cell and then agriculturally. Yeah. And there's a lot of, I mean, that's in, that's the most recent with agriculture, yeah. but there's a lot. Like, just do a Google search. I'm just putting two out there to not make this an extensive episode yeah, because exactly. it really could be. Yeah. We just, for our Patreon subscribers, the February recap just came out when you're listening to this yeah. on Patreon. And we talked about a recent another recent CRISPR news yeah. another thing that it was approved and is being used for now yeah so easily there's so many things this one just came out yesterday and I wanted to give you guys two examples one for medical which is a sickle cell which is huge right now and then this one that just came out again yesterday yeah. for for you know pork yeah <laughs> no amazing yeah it's it's really incredible and it's gonna save a lot of money to all these big corporations and stuff like that but it's also going to really help out with all these diseases and stuff like that yeah. you know it's it just... gonna instill a lot of anxiety in a lot of people i feel like 100 percent. there's gonna be those people yeah, yeah, on yeah. the you know at the corner with the signs and stuff oh, but... i mean yeah all and the time all the time that's for everything yeah you know, but anyway so yeah. thank you for tuning in yeah guys thank you and we'll see you on the next one please keep liking subscribing doing all the things yes if you want to see more of us or hear more of us go to patreon patreon.com forward slash funny medicine podcast yeah we would greatly appreciate find us it on instagram threads we love threads everywhere twitter just find us anywhere we're everywhere let us know if you guys want to do any specific episodes as well we as... have a whole entire list we are trying to cover as much as possible for all of our uh requested yeah. episodes this was so a requested this was episode a requested episode so and here you have it yeah and so we'll see you in the next one bye everyone bye like comment review us on all streaming platforms spotify apple music amazon music etc check us out on instagram and tiktok at funny medicine podcast our gmail is funny medicine 305 at gmail.com 
And remember, we are not diagnosing you. Definitely not. Just funny stuff. See you later, guys. <laughs>